Welcome back fellow island farmers. This will be the first of many advanced island sanctuary guides on this channel. And in today's video, we'll be talking about seven big mistakes I made in island sanctuaries. And by highlighting these mistakes, hopefully you get to save some time and resources by making sure you do not make the same mistakes that I did, because that's what happens when you dive into island sanctuaries on day one without reading any guides. Now, before we dive in, if you like this kind of content, do subscribe to the channel. That will mean a lot to me. Let's get started. All right, the first mistake I made was with regards to gathering. Now, when you go through the gathering tutorial, it doesn't really tell you exactly how does the various nodes respawn on the map. It simply just tells you how to gather. And initially, I thought that they were timer-based. That was the mistake I made. And how did I know that was a mistake? Well, after gathering some nodes, I basically decided to take a coffee break because I thought the trees would grow back. And off I go to make my coffee, and when I come back, the trees still essentially aren't there. So I decided to do an experiment. I went to cook dinner as well, every now and then popping back into my game just checking to see if the tree has regrown. No, it has not. And that's when I concluded it's not timer-based. And then eventually I thought, oh, maybe it's based on how active you are in island sanctuaries. Like, you always have to be moving around in order to get them to spawn, and that's not the case either. I tested that out. Now, here's the magic behind how nodes actually respawn. At any point in time in island sanctuaries, only 10 nodes can be empty. So imagine you have gathered from node 1 to node 10, they will all remain empty until you gather the 11th node. The moment you gather the 11th node, that will trigger a respawn of the node. So light bulbs should be going off in your head now. The most efficient farming route for gathering of nodes should be some form of circular pattern or route that you can take that allows you to gather in a very tight circle, if possible, a total of 11 nodes. So you can keep going on around and around to farm those nodes in close proximity. And in my gathering tutorial down the line, we will have some routes that you can basically consider to very quickly farm the materials you want. But the point is, don't sit there and wait for your nodes to respawn like me. It doesn't work. All right, moving on to mistake number two. While I'm running around my island gathering or doing my daily stuff, I always forget to mount or even use the sprint island action specific button they gave us. Or sometimes it's not that I forget, it's just such a chore between nodes and if they're so close to one another to basically press mount and then run over and then click on interact. However, I have a quality of life solution for you. And that solution is in the form of two macros I'd like to introduce to you. So on screen here, you see the first macro. Now what this macro does is that it allows you to automatically pop sprint to be more specific, the Island Sanctuary Sprint action button, run over to the next node and simply allow you to press interact. Unfortunately, you can't automate the interact. So let me demo the macro. As you can see, I have it bound to my F key bind. And if I press F, I automatically start running to the node. I do have to press interact manually though. And with that, I will chop the tree and let's do it again. So imagine this node here, I press F, I run towards the node and I press interact key bind and it simply basically you know, gather for me. As simple as that. Now, there is a second macro on screen right now, which is modified for you to mount in between nodes. And I basically use this if the two nodes are pretty far apart. All right, so let me demo how the macro works. So when you press your keybind, in this case, I have it bound to Shift F, it will basically first mount. And then after mounting, it will travel towards the node you want. And then you simply click on your interact button. And there you go. You start mining or gathering whatever node you want. As simple as that. And you can rinse and repeat. You hit the keybind again. And then you go over and press the interact keybind again. And basically, you know, it will automatically mount. It will automatically travel towards your node. And what these two macros do is that it allows you to avoid the mistakes like I did, which is I always forget to pop sprint or mount as I move between nodes and therefore I'm less efficient. And sometimes I'm just watching Netflix and I simply forget to press my keybinds. So hopefully the macro solutions are useful for you. As a side note for the two macros I mentioned earlier, I'll be putting them in the description below so you can simply copy and paste it into the game. Now for my third mistake, I initially thought that animal leavings are totally random. Now, if you don't know what animal leavings are, if you capture all these creatures and you put them on your farm, and if you continue to feed them, over time they will leave you what they call leavings. And yes, I know the term is not very flattering, but you can gather some of these leavings, and those are useful materials for you. For example, sheep will be able to give you milk or fleece, and so will other creatures that I'll cover in a more advanced guide, what they exactly give in terms of materials. But I totally misunderstood the leavings. I thought it was random. So silly me was checking in on my animals every few hours and then trying to give them a pet to see if they're giving me any leavings at this moment. And no, nothing. I've wasted so much time checking in with them. And that's the mistake. They actually do not spawn on a random timer. If your creatures on the island is going to give you a leaving, it's actually at the daily reset timer for Island Sanctuary, which is 1am PDT, or to be more specific, 1am Pacific Daylight Time. 
So as long as you keep your creatures fed, the only time you should check in and gather the leavings is at server reset, which is daily at 1am PDT. So if you avoid my mistake, you probably will save yourself tons of time. All right, mistake number four, and it's related to mistake number three. And my error here is thinking that petting the animals will actually do something. But from what I've noticed, petting the animals simply just gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling inside you. It's nice to see their animation and the heart shapes pop off, but they don't really do anything. The creatures apparently only need to be fed. There's no real function behind petting them, other than to make yourself feel happy, honestly. But I must confess though, I've spent quite a bit of time petting them, even though I know that there's absolutely no reason to do so, just simply because it's fun. All right, moving on to mistake number five. And silly me once thought that the crops are actually based on the island's day and night cycle. If you mouse over the tooltip for whatever seeds you're sowing, it will tell you the number of days that your crop requires to grow up and be harvested. So in the case of this pumpkin seed tooltip that you see on screen, it says the growth period is two days. And I thought it was two days of the game's in-game cycle, but it actually is not. It's two days of earth hours from what I observed. So folks, as long as you remember to water your plants daily, with the exception for when it's raining, then you don't have to water your plants. If you follow that, you should be able to harvest your crops after sufficient amount of earth hours and earth days have passed by. So in the case of the pumpkin, it actually takes 48 hours of earth time. Just remember to check back in at the appropriate time so that you can get the next batch of seeds going. All right, mistake number six. And this was kind of a myth that I believed at the start. You know, since day one, a lot of people have come across certain rare creatures. I myself have been moderately lucky being able to capture the black sheep, but I initially thought that the chance of capturing a creature, and yes, you can actually fail the capture, I initially thought the chance of capturing a creature is dependent on the weather or the day and night cycle. Silly me thought that, oh, maybe if I go and capture the creature at night, they might be less alert and it increases my chances of the capture. Bottom line, that was a stupid assumption for me. The chance of you capturing a creature is totally random. So, there's no crazy ritual that you have to go through, like you have to do a certain emote before you toss out your net. Although some people do believe that's how it works in treasure hunts. Just know that weather, day and night cycle does not affect the capture rate or the success rate when you're out hunting animals. And now we come to mistake number seven. Do not spend your island cowries like me on any glamour or fun aesthetic stuff if and I stress if you're trying to progress your island as soon as possible, because those resources are very valuable. And how did I know this? Initially, I thought, well, it wouldn't harm to just buy one piece of gear for testing sake, just to see how it works. But I want you to know, similar to the sinful desserts or cakes that you take from the fridge past your bedtime, while it might feel good in the moment, you will come to regret it later down the line. And in my case, I eventually ran out of resources and I became bottlenecked because without those island cowries, I'm unable to advance my islands. Those are resources that you want to keep to upgrade certain parts of your island. Now, naturally, you can totally ignore this mistake if you like to do island sanctuaries at your own pace. That's completely fine. I'm just saying you do not want to make the same mistake as I did if you're trying to power level your island sanctuary. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the seven big mistakes I made so that you do not have to make them in return and hopefully that saves you time and resources. I hope all these mistakes that I flagged as well as the solutions are helpful to you. If you found this Advanced Island Sanctuary Guide useful, do subscribe to my channel by clicking on the button in the middle of the screen that will help me out immensely and there'll be more Advanced Island Sanctuary Guides coming to this channel. You don't want to miss them. I stream on Twitch from time to time. Feel free to swing by to say hello. Lastly, a big thank you to my Patreon subscribers for keeping the channels alive. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you soon.